Welcome to the OAPN podcast with your host Adar Sakre. No bullshit, no cuts. 100% raw conversations with 0% fucks to give. We don't encourage the consumption of alcohol, but if you want to open up a cold one while you watch this, it's not a bad idea. Welcome to episode number 103. Uh yesterday we shot 102. It's not yet out. It should be out soon. Uh we shot it with RJ Amit. Uh, he's done a fabulous job at Mirchi. Uh at 27 his attempt at uh, radio and keeping not just the uh, keeping the medium alive but uh, keeping it exciting it was interesting to speak to him and uh, generally a very nice uh, sweet guy so it was good meeting him uh, today is yet another important episode for us uh, before i give you a little context let's say hi to the guest hi rohit agarwala how are you welcome to I'm the good. studio i'm good thank you so much for having me adarsh how's your day going <laughs> it's going good as usual good. Yeah, yeah you're generally a happy guy like i've noticed i try to be i try to be inside <laughs> yeah. i'm not but outside i do <laughs> <laughs> nice so uh, to give you all a quick little background uh, so azan introduced me and rohit when uh, we went down to the hub our journey with the hub started with uh, not just interviewing azan but hub was uh, the community partner for our red carpet event where we had all our guests over for a nice networking party uh, which went great uh, kudos to the hub uh, for helping us making that happen yet again so azan had introduced me and rohit uh, uh, i was i think i'd seen your content uh, but i'd never really followed up hmm. or you know I, i'm not an active follower right i think generally i don't uh, <laughs> follow like anything other than our work because there's already so much work here right uh but azan told me okay there's a page called belly opinionated rohit heads this and um, you know then i looked it up and there's some really cool stuff there like rohit's up there talking about uh, social issues uh, you know the page is called belly opinionated but uh, it's clear that he has a strong opinion <laughs> not on the page not on the page <laughs> not on the page ah on the, not page, on the page not really yeah 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 mm, we'll talk about that and that's a nice <laughs> uh, that's a nice topic but i think he's got some really cool people on there i think it's also a nice um, you know we talk about infotainment today uh it's not easy like there's multiple people doing infotainment but uh, i think there's a certain space they've there's a certain part of the pie they've taken for themselves and it's clear why it's pretty cool content if you haven't seen you should definitely check it out um Rohit was also at the red carpet. Mm-hmm. You were there. Of course, I was there. Yeah, yeah. Rohit was there, and uh, in what I know, I think Rohit and go, uh, Rohit and Azan go way back in mm-hmm. terms of how they started working together, and I think that's also curious to me in terms of where they started, what they started with, uh, and where things have unfolded for them today. Um, and generally i think we've always gone with the vibe of people uh, and like i said i really liked your vibe uh, you're a sweet guy approachable uh, in fact i was telling aditya it was so easy to even have those one or two conversations mm-hmm. with you and that's sometimes enough to show who the other person Correct. is so it was just nice to connect with rohit um, and uh, we also continue to want to work with people like uh, rohit and uh, this is a great opportunity for us to just see you know where we are what rohit is up to and what his page is up to what his personal journey has been what got him to do this work right uh one more thing you can look out for i think in this space is I have a feeling Rohit uh, has understood social media to some extent there are things um, that have really worked for them and I want to kind of see if we can take away uh, something from that if we can all learn something about social media and maybe apply that on our content and uh, yeah so welcome to the episode uh, and welcome Rohit welcome again uh thanks for coming in of course yeah. of course how's life generally it's been good it's been uh, crazy oh it's been crazy it's been fruitful a lot more to look up to mm-hmm. that's what i'm craving for right now okay yeah um how old are you you asked me how old i was <laughs> I'm I'm 25 right now I'm going to turn 26 You're 25 year. I'm 25 Are you serious Yeah yeah How old is Azan Uh he's 30 30 okay. 31 I think Okay yeah. okay So you uh you graduated where Christ Bangalore okay <laughs> Why was that uh, not... you <laughs> You hate Christ is it No yeah. no I'm a Joseph I don't uh, hate Christ uh-huh. but you know what like it, it, you are a christite like, 
Okay, wait. What does that mean? Now? What does that no, mean? No, you know what? It's like this, right? When you look at someone, hmm. uh, you can figure out if that person's Christian or a Joseph. So I'm, if I'm, I have I'm, two options. Ha, ha, ha. So <laughs> I'm like a. So so you're basically saying that my characteristics is of a Christian. No, I think. Uh, I, I think we're flipping the script here, and I'm going to interview. You. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know when you said I went to Christ. <laughs> it fits i don't it know it makes why. sense it huh. makes huh. sense huh. Huh. Makes i think sense. i think uh, christchurch in general give Maybe a very tell me. i'll tell you christchurch yeah. in general give a very like um a sidha sadha sudhrawa kind of vibe you know i don't know if you know hindi or not uh-huh. uh but like you know that kind of vibe i, I feel like that's what uh, you're talking about i guess i don't know yeah no it's nice i think i always liked uh, christ but no, you yeah, don't have to was... be you know diplomatic no, I about it, it. <laughs> it's just the rules i think no you i think the work ethic is great man like the work ethic so, that so i'm you. i'm one of the i'm one of the rare ones to say that i love christ and mm. i've had a very fruitful journey in christ yeah, okay lovely i mean i know multiple people yeah. who have enjoyed their time yeah, with christ yeah. because it fits so well with you know who they are Correct. and what they want to do in life and everything so when did you graduate christ 2019 and post that what so post that uh, for a year and a half i worked at two different places i started off working at dynot which was a college college placement oh sweet yeah 5 to 6 months i worked there it was it was i was always been into marketing uh, and as a marketing undergraduate degree you always get like a sales job and i got a sales job there i worked that for 5 months i was like okay fuck this i can't do it mm. um and i always knew i wanted to start something of my own that is when i got an opportunity at an incubation center called nsr cell No. which is in iam bangalore okay and see this is why you're a christ right i have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> like the, you know josephites don't go down this road like we call siddharth pai you know <laughs> we call siddharth pai uh, so he probably belong to christ but that's another so um i i thought that <laughs> <laughs> i started i started working uh, at nsr cell mm. i worked there for 10 months this was also during covid mm. and i came up with the idea of barely open needed during that time and i started it off after mm. 10 months of working there okay yeah and um, just to get a quick background like uh, what's your family into and uh, oh, yeah so my my dad's dad is in the income tax department yeah. he's done okay. he's done that his whole life mm-hmm. he's actually about to retire wow. next year wow. um mm. and we we are from assam guwahati mm. we shifted here about 17 years 16 17 years ago my dad shifted for work mm. and i have an older brother 5 years older to me he's also 30 okay. both of us have shifted here we did our schooling here i shifted here when i was in fourth grade and my schooling has happened here my college has happened here School. Where, where? Uh, I started. So, Marshall Public School was the last okay. school that I was in mm-hmm. um, for about five six years, mm-hmm. and then I joined Christ, and then I started working here. So, mm-hmm. born, brought up. I mean, brought up in Bangalore. Okay. And uh, what does your older brother do? He works in a startup as well. So he he is a he is an overachiever. He graduated from SRCC, uh, which is the best BCom college. Then he went to IIM Bangalore directly for his MBA, um, and then he's been he worked in corporate. He worked in a startup, and he's currently working in a startup. In a startup. Yeah. And um, you know, your dad had uh, any certain expectations that my son should be. Honestly, not. I think like I that. think it's always uh, the stereotype is that the older one gets to. you know have bear the brunt of the mm. dad and the younger one sort of gets to enjoy enjoy life <laughs> <laughs> so my 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 the philosophy of my dad is always that you know um whatever you do just be educated he's always wanted he is also very educated like he's done several degrees across different fields um and he wanted the same for me and my brother and he's pushed our our extended family members also to pursue education as much as possible so his his thing was just that just be educated that's it be educated what you do with it is left yeah, to you yeah it's it's, le- it's left to us hmm. and uh, so you you go right out of college you joined dine out i joined dine out post yes. dine out post dine out i joined nsr cell okay i worked there for 10 months mm-hmm. and october of 2020 i quit nsr cell and i started barely opinionated okay so let's talk about that right so barely opinionated what is barely opinionated when you named this what came to your mind why did you start this and what is this all about 
since the beginning and i'm proud of this my vision for barely opinionated has always been that we want to be the go to social media we want to be the go to social media page for authentic factual information right and um, our my 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 vision is that i want to build like how a times times now or a times of india is right the times group i want to build a group like that where where it's a new age social media is a new age um news uh, on social media essentially yeah, okay yeah. and uh, this love for news was uh, there from the beginning no what no uh, i i honestly why news why news because so see um when i wanted to start something of my own i wasn't sure what i wanted to start um the thing was during lockdown social media was booming but then i wasn't good at dancing i wasn't good at singing i wasn't I, i'm not a comedian right yeah, yeah. um but then i realized that one thing i was good at was due throughout college and school i was a very introverted kid yeah. and in as soon as i entered college i just knew that i had to flip the script and just turn myself turn the person i was and that is when i started doing a lot of debating muns parliamentary debates that is what got me a lot interested in politics and geopolitics and i realized that what if i was able to combine the combine the skill of what i know about politics and what i what i could do with social media that is how barely opinionated was born so it started as this um, yeah so i understand the factors that went in so this was which year 2020 20 October of 2020. They opened up like an Instagram page and Instagram page a friend of mine started off with me. He used to do the research, I used to do the marketing, the design everything. Okay. It was the two of us for a good 7 8 months until we started seeing some growth. Then we got in interns who worked for us for free, um who just wanted to contribute. Um and a year later exactly a year later is when I met Azan. Mm. Yeah. Uh, after a year of starting Belly Opinions. Yes. During that year, was it only this project, or your hands were full with uh, things? I was trying well. out a lot of different things. My right. my sell my sell to my parents for starting barely opinionated mm. was that. See, I'm young. I I was I was twenty uh, two at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I was twenty two at that point, and my sell to them was that I will try it out for six seven months or a year. Uh, you give me a year. Um, if this doesn't turn out anything, at least I learn a lot about social media. I learn a lot about designing, and I knew that that was something that everyone was looking for, right? So even if I'm not able to. achieve anything out of this in a year i'll have enough skill to get a job in social media that was my sell to them so throughout this process i started in october of 2020 but then i spent a lot of time doing a lot of different things around social media right mm-hmm. um at that point i was i i did a bunch of um online courses um i started working in different ways in the influencer economy as well influencer marketing econ- economy as well um i started managing creators um i started working with brands to help other people get brand deals i started working with production companies to help but who's driving all this it's i'm true. driving myself I'm I'm just you're just like connecting with I'm people, just connecting with different people up, exactly exactly watching stuff and I'm just connecting with people in my network I'm just trying to connect with people outside of my network just figure out ways in which like for example I'll give you an example so there's this page called the scribble stories on Instagram yeah, I know. 5 million followers yeah. right so the the admin of that page is actually my junior he's a year junior to me so when we were in college he was running that page at that point wow. right so everyone knew that he was doing that um and he was one of the only ones that I knew that okay he is someone who's made it on social media right so when i started this i reached out to him and i was like bro um i'm starting this i want to learn so can i can i work with you in some way um and i was like okay i'll help you get brand deals right and that time we started working on a non exclusive way like i don't know how you, i don't know if you know how these deals work mm-hmm. but it's usually that if someone is getting a if someone gets me a brand deal they'll get like a 15 20% cut got it yeah, yeah. and and for him it was no loss right he yeah, wasn't yeah. paying me a salary he was just like yeah. okay go do it and that is how i actually started getting the scribble stories brand deals mm-hmm. um i did that for a bit so and he, was, he had his commissions on it and i had my commission on it so he would okay. essentially if i if he was charging 1 lakh mm-hmm. i would take like 15% of that and he would get the rest oh, that's of it that's great why right? not why not right yeah. um no loss for him <laughs> yeah. and as i was doing this i was i was learning about how to reach out to brands how how this works he was also teaching me a lot and then because of the knowledge i was able to garner from that 
I got in more creators. I started uh, managing about four creators. All of this non-exclusive. None, none of them exclusive. So if I was getting them deals, I was getting money. If I was not getting them deals, no harm, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I spent, and I'm very proud of this. I spent a good year and a half to two years just learning different aspects of social media, different aspects of influencer economy, different aspects of production, and I still continue to do so. Mm. So you all like deep dive into the exactly whole thing, and and um, I also, which I still continue to do, is educate people. So um, I'm I I've always been a trainer since my college days. Oh really? Yeah, training into soft skills, um, um, content creation. Content creation, of course, I got into it after starting Barely Opinionated. Um, so I started working with this company called My Captain, uh, which is an edtech. My Captain is uh, the collaboration you have on your first post. On your personal page, mm. on your personal page, your first post is with my captain. I do not remember. Yeah, it is. I do not remember it. <laughs> I <before>. remember. <laughs> Thank you. I Thank you for doing the research. In the last two days, <laughs> I might have, I might have, I might have posted yeah. about it just to show people that I'm doing that. Yes. And so yeah, um, I I started working with my captain as a soft skill trainer itself. Mm. So I worked with them for two years, and I would take training sessions for their students. Again, now I'm working with this place called the Lit School, which is for uh, which is for creators itself. Oh. Um, so I do a bunch of different things, honestly. Wow, man, that's a lot for twenty five. Don't you think? Uh, uh, based on what I see in the on the internet, not really. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the internet really doesn't make you feel good about yourself. I think what the internet has done is it's removed these boundaries also. Exactly. Way, right. Like exactly. If I did, if I wouldn't have seen other twenty year olds doing all of this, I might not have been motivated enough to do what I'm doing. Yeah. See, for me, you're twenty five, but for you, someone's twenty. <laughs> exactly and for that 20 year old there's a 15 16 year old who's doing much better yeah so i think those boundaries have gone exactly. i think it comes back to who we are where we come from and exactly. what we want to do exactly so i think those markers are better to kind of i know 30 year olds yeah. who are like who are who are who have a 9 to 5 job 9 to 6 job who are very satisfied with their life they don't give a fuck about anything else i can swear right yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so who don't care about anything else, right? Mm. They 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 just want to work, they want to come back, they want to relax. And it's just up to you. It's just about the person that you are. I'm someone who just wants to I I am a hungry person, mm. is what I would say. And what drives you though? Oh, uh, what I've realized is it's it's a lot of childhood trauma. <laughs> oh, shit, really? <laughs> it's so, I think like what it's like uh, people aren't believing you. Is yeah, or, exactly. It's it's more about like being who, the who didn't believe in you. Like. Just I've see as until I reached college, I was a kid. Like if I was in your class, uh, you would probably not even notice me. Yeah, okay. Right. Um, I've always had body image issues. Like I'm fat mm -hmm. right now, right? I've always been fat throughout my life. Um, I've always had body image issues. Mm -hmm. I've never been a good kid. I mean, if, if not not been good. Uh, I've not been a good student. So not okay. been great. What at, were you scoring? Very average, bro. Like no, okay. just making it through. Like eleventh, I had to give retests just to be able to. And eleventh was my lowest point. Yeah, eleventh was my lowest point, where I had sort of just given up on anything. And right after eleventh, between eleventh and twelfth is where I had the major transformation. Where um, I went on a physical transformation journey. So in about six months, I lost twenty five thirty kilos, and I became a very very fit guy. Like. I was extremely fit. Like I, I, I had reached a point where I was about to hit like six pack abs. Right. Wow. So now you see me like this, mm -hmm. but then at that point I was like very fit. And how much weight did you lose? About a, about a 30 kilos I would have lost. And then I, and then I, in how much time? Uh, very less, like seven months, eight months. I was, I went from a fat ass kid to like a mm. fit guy. Like I'd become so thin that my, my parents were worried that, you know, I would, I would disappear. There's something, wrong, with There's something wrong. And like, they took me to a nutritionist and like, okay, you have to follow this diet. But I never followed any of that. Yeah. I was just very, I loved, I loved gymming at that point. Mm. But then that, you know, like, if doesn't it doesn't stay too long. It doesn't stay. Like, uh, it was a hockey stick and then <laughs> a complete drop. Yeah, I mean, I can um, empathize with you on that, right? Like, uh, I've had my fair share of like, putting on weight and losing weight. <laughs> I think for the last... Uh, Maybe the last six years because same thing. I do. I don't know uh, if I was. Uh, I was considered plump. Hmm. I don't think I was ever considered fat. Mm -hmm. I was considered plump. Um, thankfully, the height came through. 
<laughs> you know exactly yeah, right? exactly i always knew like exactly. the height is kind of saving me <laughs> but it saves me until like 90 kilos yeah, yeah. after 90 kilos even i look fat no but i'm always okay. envious of people like you who have the fucking height and don't have to worry Something. too much about it <laughs> so no the reason i'm talking about this is uh, it's pretty relevant and yeah. i don't want to just skip it yeah, uh, yeah. as it's casual right because uh, the more you look at it that becomes like the seed of like so many other things correct so anyway i grew up being called plump mm. um i was always very inspired by sports like i love watching athletes mm-hmm. right the passion that they have i wish i had that and um, i know that requires also a lifestyle uh, around it which is great but it's hard to maintain and we'll get around why it's hard to maintain so i think 20 bro 2014 or 2015 for the first time i went through the same type of transformation which is what bro 9 years ago i was 21 mm. 21 22 i lost weight mm. from then on and i swear to god on this from then on from 21 to 30 now every year i live two lives <laughs> a fat live, life and a, a thin a fat life and a thin life <laughs> this is the truth he's seen it uh, for the last maybe 3 4 years that he's known me right so mm-hmm. uh usually now around this time you will see me <laughs> you know over the next 3 4 no, so so do you follow do you follow summer winter cycle where summer is like fit body and then winter is oh, like fat body no bro what cycle <laughs> this is but it happens once in a year okay. so i lose that weight i get back on it i feel great mm-hmm. and then uh uh two habits that have always fucked me was my drinking habits and my eating habits mm. uh i've quit alcohol mm-hmm. i've quit alcohol for good uh, you had a lot of alcohol at your party though <laughs> <laughs> yeah man everyone was lost <laughs> uh, thank god <laughs> thank god that was the hope you know i wasn't drinking i just had to ensure everyone else drank mm-hmm. so uh, i quit alcohol but food i think i still struggle with mm-hmm. uh i find a lot of fucking comfort in food mm-hmm. uh it's also that i work so fucking hard in my mm-hmm. life that like it's so hard for someone to convince you me need that, that dopamine yeah. you need that dopamine yeah. yeah it's so hard for for someone to tell me i can't order a cheese burst medium pizza and night <laughs> you know and enjoy my netflix show <laughs> because come on man i've done too many things right yeah. Yeah. but again i know that's not this is probably an excuse uh but coming back to the body shaming right uh i think me and you i can confidently say are people who have learned where to keep these things mm-hmm. right where they belong mm-hmm. because i've i mean you'll have i would say i still haven't learned cuz i still have body image issues no it is i do too mm. but at least you don't let it get into the way of your day to day it does that's yeah. the issue it wow. does it okay, does it does get why? into mm. yeah um I feel like if I was if I was fit now I would be doing a lot more I would be a lot more confident in what I'm doing. Mm. That's a that's a big and oh, that is wow. what I'm trying yeah yeah that is what I'm trying to get to now like I've over the past 2 uh, months I have been actively trying to now cut down mm. and lose weight. Okay. Um obviously not going on the journey that I went on about 10 mm-hmm. not 10 about 8 years ago um because that journey was like a very extreme journey like it was very extreme mm-hmm. i don't think i'll be ever be able to get to that i did keto once <laughs> how did that yeah, work for you in a month uh, i lost like uh, 15 kilos wow and um and uh, the month after i put it back <laughs> so yeah that is what happens dude yeah. that is what happens i'm just glad that i was able to continue that for like 2 years and then i oh, lost wow. it all mm. um but yeah uh but for what it's worth uh i don't think you give that away mm-hmm. i don't think you give out the fact that you have these uh, things in interesting your mind. uh so you're doing something right yeah because hopefully uh, yeah man i mean i know when a person shows that i know what it looks like you're clearly like <laughs> you've learned how to not show it at least <laughs> right but i i really hope uh, you get over that i'm not fully out of that mm-hmm. too but uh, i hope to get yeah. around it let's hope for the best anyway yeah. let's not make this a emotional <laughs> episode <laughs> no <laughs> anyway where were we where did this come from um the god the why 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 i want to do a lot more ah okay so yeah what do you, so you want money you want fame you want uh, what is it uh, i think i want respect that's okay. what i'm craving mm. i just want everyone's respect mm. i i feel like i'm a very 
people pleaser kind of guy also mm-hmm. uh, i want to please people around me i feel bad when i'm not able to so i just feel like i crave respect mm-hmm. and that sh- and money of course mm-hmm. money is always there uh, i wouldn't say i don't want money mm-hmm. but respect is what i'm looking what's for. something nice you bought for yourself <laughs> honestly nothing oh, really <laughs> no mm-hmm. um I mean I I I did buy a car recently but that's like a family car um so it's I, a car it's a car <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> it's a it's a <laughs> bro <laughs> so so it's a i'll tell you i'll tell you the story it's a, it's a family car which the family needed um i use it the most honestly cuz no one else drives particularly um but but we needed that car but i uh, but i don't usually spend money on anything apart from food i would say mm. when i go out trips and food is what i spend my money on you know, so you love traveling yeah hmm. nice um just going back to that one year uh, before you met azan and you were basically taken a deep dive into uh, a lot of these things um what was uh, the first payout for belly opinionated how did that come through i did not make uh i think we made our first see we were making money through other ways not through belly opinionated um so essentially through belly opinionated we made money uh in feb of 2022 so okay. uh, almost a year and a half later after starting mm-hmm. uh but before that i was making money through other sources like i said the the bra- the creator management the teaching all of that is how i was making the consulting mm-hmm. all that is the way i was for belly opinionated where did it come through from um the first deal was through this company called josh uh okay. jo uh, it's the josh app mm-hmm. they wanted us to basically create the same content that we are creating on belly opinionated but in hindi and put it on their page Oh. on on their app basically mm. um and that is how we got our first paycheck through badly opinionated yeah. and uh, was it like a respectful one <laughs> or no no not really very minimal like oh. 35k i think oh, okay meant, yeah. okay yeah i mean to uh, for for all the work that you had put in uh, that wouldn't have seemed like i was like it's a start it's better than nothing right better than nothing like mm. even at this point something is better than nothing for me like mm. um if if someone's going to come to me and be like okay here is 70000 instead of 1 lakh it's not like i'll deny that 70000 right mm-hmm. it's that kind sure um i definitely want to uh, talk a little more about uh you know what we can take from you on social media i know there's like so much <laughs> maybe one or two things but we'll dive into that a little later uh how did the hub come through where did azan enter what happened there so the story is also very interesting so um <clears throat> I remember this in April of April or May of 21 when the second wave was going on I came across this Instagram post from the Hub Bangalore which said uh, okay we are start- there's a creator in residence program creator in residence yeah creator in residence program the idea was that they would we would be able to live there for 3 months we would be able to work out of there really? for 3 months for free um okay. that's all Mm. it was that that was that was the deal and i applied for it i was like wow this is interesting but i was very skeptical that okay like i i, I didn't i don't believe in myself a lot so I'll, i just doubt myself and i'll be like okay fuck it i i don't think i'll get it but i just applied for it at that point and i didn't hear back i didn't hear back at all at all and at that point the hub bengaluru was looking at least based on the content that they were creating they were looking like a place to be at for creators right mm. um and um, months went by in and i remember in september of 21 i uh, september of 21 yes this is almost 9, 10 to 11 months after i started barely opinionated this was the lowest point for me at that point because i was about to i was i was every day i was like contemplating ki, okay am i done is is this it Look, should i start looking for a job because i wasn't i was going nowhere we weren't with, growing with that well page. with the, with the page um we weren't growing that much and i was like okay maybe it's time for me to shut shut it down and <laughs> it was a very low point for me and on one of those days i get this random call at like 8 pm from this from this girl called ankita and she is like hey uh, i'm calling from the hub bangalore i remember you had you had applied for the creator in residence program right i'm like yeah and she's like 
our our founder azan wants to talk to you you've been selected and i'm like wow okay th- thank you like you know let's let's connect she like okay tomorrow 8 pm you will get on a call with him then the next day comes 8 pm comes i'm trying to reach out to her she's not fucking replying um i'm texting her i'm calling her she's not replying and then at 8:30 i call her and she's like and and then she doesn't pick up she texts me he azan will join and here's the link she sends the link i'm waiting on that link i'm waiting i'm waiting i'm waiting he doesn't join <laughs> He that fucker joins at nine. Nine p.m. He joins, and that's and that was the that was my first taste of typical Azan. He joined at nine p.m. and that is when that is when we spoke and and in the first call he he showed a lot of interest and barely opinionated. He was like, you know, I I love what you guys are doing. I want to you know join you guys in it. Why don't you come down, meet me, and and we'll take it forward. I remember there were two other people, but then. Okay, whatever. Mm. Um, and then I met him. We had our conversation. And from the first day itself, his intent was very clear that you know he wants to become a partner in Barely Opinionated mm. and help us take it forward. So we got selected for the program. We I stayed there for three months. I worked out of there for three months. And throughout, you stayed at. Uh, I stayed at the hub for three months. <laughs> October to January. Sweet man, I love this. Uh, like at that point, <laughs> at the point, see, so at the point, it's so exciting, man. It's like, so exciting, and even giving, for me, it was yeah. so exciting. Yeah. And there's this one thing that I believe in a lot, which is that everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. And at that point, where I was um, contemplating just giving up, is when I got that call that essentially helped me take it forward. And and if Azan didn't come on board, I wouldn't have been able to pursue barely opinionated till date. I would have closed it down. um so yeah three months i stayed there three months i worked out of there and in those three months they realized that i was very good i realized that they were very helpful um and and i started getting my first consistent paycheck from them um i became a consultant for them i started creating content for them and i remember first few viral pieces of theirs was created by me um and uh, Yeah that's that's the journey and we registered the company in February of 2022 and we are here today Wow man hmm. <clears throat> What do you think it's about uh, Azan that uh, gets people to work with him He is a very humble guy like that's the best way I can describe it right like he doesn't need to be humble he doesn't need to be approachable um yeah i mean over the years it's reduced the approachability i'm guessing has reduced <laughs> oh <laughs> and, and no part of this <laughs> <laughs> i i don't know i know what your scene is with him but i'm just saying in general and it makes sense he should be like that i've told him a lot about it as well um Oh, but wow. but at that point when i met him mm. um and and the sort of conversations i had with him he felt like a very humble guy and he had the means and the resources to help me at that point right mm. um so i would say it was selfish for him it was selfish for me um and it worked out mm. how many people were there at the hub at that point uh, i don't remember like as their team i think about 17 18 people maybe i don't remember exactly okay yeah? okay so in a way uh belly opinionated found its uh, home at the hub bangalore mm. uh okay that's nice um now in terms of what belly opinionated is doing uh is there i mean are there members that are uh, only working for belly opinionated yeah yeah so like we have a, a so we have, we we currently have a team of about seven people excluding me and azan and what do these folks do uh research editing shooting um we do a lot of agency work as well we do exclusive content for other brands mm. um so that's why we have we have these people okay yeah. okay and uh in terms of uh say uh, how do i how do i put this okay now in terms of content uh how are you looking at categories under infotainment and mm. I, i do see there's a you know uh there is this move towards 
politics. Uh, I want to see how you're looking at that and what are the categories really drive you because politics definitely drives you. We started off for the primary reason of politics. Yeah. Like we, our primary thing was that we want to talk about what's happening in the country and around the world. Um, the reason we did it was because at the point when we started it, <coughs> internet, I'm sure you also know this, when you were, when you were at home during COVID, everyone was reading a lot. They had a lot of free time and, and, Everyone was putting out their opinions on, on social media, right? I'm sure your friends were putting it out. Either you or your friends was putting it out, right? The issue was that when these opinions were being put out, they weren't um, based on facts. You were probably reading his what he was putting out and you were forming your opinion. I was, read, I was reading what you were putting out without facts and I was making my opinion. It was essentially Chinese whisper, right? And we wanted to try and curb that Chinese whisper. That is why we, we we've from the beginning only spoken about social affairs and governance. Mm -hmm. And and a lot a little bit of business affairs. Okay, so when um, uh, Think School is nice, yeah, Are you, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, Think School is a big it? inspiration. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think they've really like in this space. Yeah. they really kind of. Uh, I wouldn't say they're into politics. They're more into yeah business and economics. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. so uh, when you look at politics as a category, and you've taken that as one of your primary this thing, what? What are some of the challenges that you face in that? Especially recently, because of the elections, we've yeah. we've lost followers from both sides. You know, yeah. um, the right wingers have unfollowed us. The left wingers have unfollowed us. It's just that when you put a con when when we put a content, we try to be as neutral as possible, right? Uh, but depending on the topic, one topic will be leaning towards one side. One topic will be leaning towards the other side. It's just the topic selection that happens. No, okay. And because we are talking about one thing, the other person doesn't want to follow us. When we talk about the other thing, one person doesn't want to follow us. That's that's the biggest challenge with politics. People are so divided um, amongst each other. Um, they 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 just they've forgotten about having conversations. They just want to prove themselves right. That's mm -hmm. a very basic human psychology that they want to put up. I want to tell what is in my mind. Right, you want to tell what's in your mind, yeah. and I want the other person to know what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling. Yeah. There's no dialogue ready. There's for, no dialogue. There's no dialogue. So, as a page, the profile is it right to say is trying to be a medium than actually take a stand? Exactly. Okay. We want to put out facts. We want to let the people have conversations. Mm -hmm. So, if you see, we have a WhatsApp group as well. We have about five hundred people on that group, mm -hmm. um, and there's active conversation going on all the time around different topics. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you never take a personal uh, stand on no, no. politics? Unless, maybe. unless not on the page, unless it's like a very generalistic, like a, like a, like a crime has happened, right? Obviously there yeah. can't be another side to where you're supporting the criminal, yeah, yeah. right? So those are very generalistic point of views, but otherwise we don't put out opinions. Hmm. Exciting. What do you want belly opinion to be? Like I said, I want it months. to be like a Times Group. Like, I want okay. it to be. I want it to be an umbrella company where people. We are the. We are the go-to people on social media for any sort of information, whether it's politics, whether it's business, whether it's sports, whether it's music, anything. Mm -hmm. How do you see the scale of things changing with social media, especially like? What do you mean? Uh, and the medium, mm -hmm. like uh, recently, also is having this conversation and. You know, now everything's become real dependent, right? Mm -hmm. Like businesses are dependent on reels. Mm -hmm. There's no posts that are making noise. There's no, uh, there's no five minute videos making noise. It's Correct. all literally come down to reels. Mm. Um, and I do, do you think Instagram is doing a good job at uh, helping creators? Instagram is doing a good job in sustaining itself. I would say. Okay. But that do doesn't necessarily like, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it's helping creators. Why do you think it's not? See, if you're if you're a new creator um, who's just starting out and has has good entertainment value, then Instagram is going to serve you, and you're going to love Instagram, right? Um, but if you're someone like me who's doing more serious content, who's uh, who's been on the page for three, who's been on the platform for three and a half years. Not, not as much. They, they want to support more new age creators, more entertainment value. Who can get more quick uh, reactions? That kind of, that kind of platform. So then, what's the solution, Rod? See, here's the, here's my problem, right? Mm. You're sitting with 
what 200k plus how, how yeah, what's yeah. the value yeah 180 on instagram 180 and, almost uh, 200 mm -hmm. uh, you've been doing this for three and a half years <laughs> you have way more uh, research power than Correct. me i have not spent that much time mm -hmm. as you have clearly uh, but at the same time it's not that our content hasn't gone viral mm -hmm. uh, our content has reached a lot of more than what we thought right mm -hmm. with the type of profile i have it's gone places i never thought it mm -hmm. uh, we've earned the respect but instagram has never been sweet to us mm -hmm. yeah it's uh, maybe we'll learn a few things from you mm -hmm. but generally it's yeah like you said it's not serving like a large group of creators correct uh if someone needs to change that is that this not happen? going to change it's not going to change because what is think of it from a like like break we 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 do this a lot we do this exercise a lot break down the platform in the most basic sense right what does the platform want the platform wants people to stay and engage right how will people engage that is where human psychology comes into the picture right what is it that's going to make someone like your reel what is it that's going to make someone watch your reel till the end right um and the methods of getting that attention and getting those likes and and have that which they have changed over years and they'll keep evolving right you if you want to sustain on instagram you have to make sure that you are continuously updating yourself with what's changing in human psychology what's changing in the way people are getting attention like for ex just a simple example to it until two or three years ago those um fast moving graphics on on instagram with the, the click 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 sound effects those were booming a lot right high high editing value very well they were doing really well now that's not the case you you uh, a reel that you shoot like this with your phone talking very candidly right is doing a lot better than those highly produced highly edited reels yeah right hardly edited now hardly you need you don't need editing you just go stand there talk you're done right um and there are very minute things about instagram that that we figured out that really help you get engaged like the most simplest thing give us a few things most simplest thing right uploading a reel more than 60 seconds doesn't work on instagram right you although they allow you to upload till one uh, till 90 seconds you should always as soon as so you, you should notice this difference upload a reel which is 59 59 seconds 59 milliseconds and then upload a reel which is like 60 seconds in one millisecond not down brothers <laughs> uh. you'll automatically see the engagement take a huge dip on the 60 second one millisecond so when you say that are you saying people are watching less or oh, instagram itself instagram is, like is not pushing that content that's the issue okay let's go next next <laughs> <laughs> if you upload a piece of video which is more than one and a half minutes it's going to do a lot better and it's going to not it's not going to get you new audience but it's going to get you a lot more engage with, engagement with your existing audience very nice because it's the simple fact of demand and supply mm -hmm. right there's not enough supply of uh, 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 more than 90 second <coughs> pieces of content right um, these, this is the most basic thing another basic thing don't if once you put up a piece of content you should never edit anything in that when if you edit like a caption if you edit anything in that instagram automatically reduces the reach make the product ready to go ready to upload ready to upload don't Just caption mu music music also do it okay. add trending music it helps uh -huh. right so you, you, that's okay that's mm -hmm. okay that's okay um but if you upload and then you decide to edit oh i made a on mistake on instagram and all of that it gone take, your yeah, your I've your reach that. is gone yeah. right um so yeah these these are just mm, like cute. some of the basic things that that we what about time figured of upload out. time of upload matters a lot um we upload at we usually upload at 10 30 am now right wow um, really yeah. yeah it makes sense also for your page exactly yeah. people on the go might yeah, want yeah. to yeah. know and know um, we decide to upload say instead of six instead of ten thirty a.m. We decide to upload at like seven p.m. or eight p.m. Doesn't work, right? Um, so yeah, all of these things. There, there are a lot of these things which keep coming to my mind. I can't remember right now, but yeah. Uh, barely opinionated people follow for factual, factual honest information. information. Correct. Uh, does Rohit want them to follow for Rohit at some point? <laughs> uh yeah obviously How that's is, a very uh, important thing yeah and it's we are trying to make that make that switch now like yeah. 
we are mm-hmm. i'm trying to show my personality a lot more on the page mm-hmm. um whether it's through stories or through dms or through just talking to people but i'm trying to show a lot more of my personality i think um a brand can only grow with a with a with a face no, otherwise it can't sustain itself Mm. um you've met a bunch of creators and mm-hmm. you i'm sure you've met like really successful creators with say 500k or maybe a million mm-hmm. or more than that uh i truly believe that uh even if a person has say a million followers on instagram today it doesn't guarantee relevance for more than 2 years yeah yeah it's no. like you see um you know uh, touchwood we've been able to sustain ourselves mm. for 3 and a half yeah. years but uh, the creators that were booming about 2 uh, years ago have no presence now um and and that's just the name of the game it's you because we started off as a brand then that's the see that's the opportunity cost yeah. between starting as a brand and starting as an individual as an individual you can't sustain yourself for too long you yeah. you are going to get wiped out but as a brand you have more long that's why i just took the decision of starting as a brand that um, i would have more longevity but on the short term it's not it's not done a good job for me right mm. and this is the this is the cost you pay also it's a opportunity cost you have to make yeah. the decision yeah <clears throat> i also felt that about us as well like i think for me like the most recent learning in what we have discussed is okay others needs to be out there more mm-hmm. like who's others people don't know he's yeah. met 100 people yeah. but they don't i'll know. tell you so i'll tell you something about podcasting as well mm-hmm. right sure podcasting in itself can never work mm, something has to back there it there are two two ways in which a podcast can work right one is that um you have created some other content and you've created an audience base for yourself and that audience so for example you have a million followers on youtube right and this is something that think school i think is also doing right now right mm. um they have garnered an audience that trusts them for the business related research economic related research and say they have like 3 4 million followers now now they've started a podcast now it's not necessary that all the people that watch their think school page will necessarily come on their podcast mm-hmm. right a, a section of them will come on to come and watch the podcast which is still a sizable audience mm-hmm. so out of 3 million followers expect like 5% yeah. to come and watch the podcast right so that's one way to do it so it's either you've the you've done something else to build yourself and then the, that audience is carrying forward to this page or it's the host right people love the host mm. which is why they want to come i'll give you an example like uh, do you know logan paul yeah yeah yeah, yeah? he has impulsive, impulsive right yeah. impulsive is successful because people oh, love logan, logan paul, paul yeah. right people want to listen to logan paul that is why they are regardless of who the guest is yeah. they're coming or the third thing which i forgot is also the guest right mm. if you have successful guests if you have big guests then then people are going to so so for example if you were to get a nikhil kamat right yeah you your episode would boom right <laughs> it would do really well yeah and out of say for example 100 people watch your podcast with nikhil kamath out of that 100 people maybe 5 to 10 people will be we'll like okay watching. i love adarsh now yeah. i i like adarsh's mm-hmm. personality and they'll continue to watch your content mm-hmm. makes sense makes sense uh, how, how do you look at podcasting generally though the future of podcasting and what do you i think it's too saturated at this point like it's, it's saturated you're saying every tom dick and harry starting it's just about sustaining like for example what you're doing with mm. with 103rd episode mm. right which is incredible mm. most um, um people can't reach yeah. 103 episodes right i am stuck at i have done what 20 episodes maybe till now mm. right um even though we have all the necessary resources that we need to be able to shoot podcast mm. um so so just being able to sustain yourself is the biggest thing in podcasting so any tom dick and harry can yeah. start a podcast from their ai tools like you don't like we have the shore like you have this road mic we have shore yeah. mic we don't literally don't even need these mics anymore yeah, i could record on the phone i could run it through a tool and it will give me a very, very crisp. clear crisp audio right so it's you you don't need much to to start podcasting as well it's just about how are you able to sustain yourself how are you able to stand out yeah um 
I feel like it's a medium that's here to stay. Exactly. Uh, there's a lot of so it's saturated in the way that people are looking at it. Exactly. So, but there's much more to it than we actually. If think. you're if you're a Tom, Dick, and Harry starting a podcast right yeah. now, it's a very bad idea. Yeah. But if you're someone famous who's starting a podcast, yeah. it's amazing. It's a, and that is what everyone is yeah, doing yeah. now. Right? <laughs> that is what everyone is doing, and yeah. they are going to eat up the market of podcasting. So mm-hmm. you know. But I do feel. Uh, with uh this like everything else a lot of people jumped in hmm. a lot of people will jump will jump out yeah and they have few. already yeah <laughs> yeah there will be a few correct who will be like you know what i'm sure 3 years ago when you started you had yeah, other yeah. people who had started yeah. podcast around you and they would have stopped they're not there now they're not there <laughs> bro like the the idols that i used <laughs> to think you know <laughs> at least around me at that point uh, they do seven like episodes sure. bro seven episodes is the average number of episodes before which people stop wow Mm-hmm. sweet that's good news for us <laughs> no we are here to stay i think uh, what has gone well for us is uh, i think the intent correct uh, we have started with the right intent mm-hmm. uh, we have been as honest as mm. uh, you know even if we have a few thousand people they know the intent is there. correct uh, but i think we've really struggled with uh, understanding the business of it exactly yeah i feel like i feel like i've i've seen your episodes yeah. right i feel like you could be you could be i i think you need to understand social media a lot better yeah, yeah. that's where i think yeah. once you understand that right mm-hmm. your podcast will do really well because there is no there is no issue in you being yeah. able to consistently put out content you are already yeah. doing it yeah. it's yeah. just that you need to get the social media understanding yeah. and if you do that you're you're good you're good Yeah, I mean that's why we're meeting people like you, son. <laughs> so hopefully we learn something and things change. But it's an exciting space to be in. Uh, so uh, you know, no. I understand where belly opinionated needs to be. Uh, I understand the where hub comes in, where has uh, where Azan comes in. But what are some of those other things you would want to accomplish in uh, your life? Like apart from these things, maybe you haven't started or explored or honestly. Yeah. I I just want to be able to make enough money to live a mm-hmm. decent life. That's okay. All. Okay. It's not like I have I have my I'm I'm my family is pretty good. Touchwood. We are we are we are we are mm-hmm. well off, and that is why I'm able to do You're this. Able to do I'm this. able to do this, mm-hmm. right? Um, my parents have never had to rely on me to be able to sustain or anything like that, mm. which a lot of. Yeah, people have to go through, which okay. I really, really, you know, appreciate about the life that I have. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just that I just want to, I just want to accomplish a lot more. I don't know what I want to accomplish, mm. but I just want to accomplish a lot more. That's all mm. I have. Uh, how's the work going right now? Is it hectic? Is it of course, bro. Peaceful? It's always yeah. It's always hectic. It's mm. it's always hectic, and what I feel like what does the usual day look like? My usual day is I'll wake up around nine. Um, I'll I'll aim to go to office by twelve. Mm-hmm. Um, in between I'll have like we do we have the upload. I do the uploads myself. Yeah. So uploading is there, uh, taking care of making sure that pe- people have the work mm-hmm. dedicated and everything. Twelve twelve thirty I'll reach office. Um, twelve thirty to nine thirty ten I'm at office. Wow. Um, shoots projects, reaching out to people, all of that happens. Um, and by ten ten thirty I'll go back home, have dinner, mm-hmm. meet my friends, and I'm and and I sleep by like one thirty two. Yeah. Okay. So you are uh, you're pretty much awake in the night. Yeah. <laughs> I, think I, the, I at this point I don't know who is in, <laughs> who is in. Who is I is think in. that's the yeah. Especially yeah. today, I think a lot of us are awake at night. Like, Correct. Uh, that's that's no more a that's no more a rare thing. That's no more a rare thing. Correct. You Correct. do get responses at one thirty in the night. Correct. If you drop a message, people are awake. Especially at night. Honestly, yeah. You you can get a lot more responses at night than you can during mm-hmm. the day because everyone's on the phone. Sure. Uh, are there other things that is changing with social media that maybe we don't know about? Uh, things with Instagram. Are there new applications? Uh, I think Instagram is just to just to just a medium for you to reach out to people, but it's not yeah. a sustainable. platform like okay. we are we are also focusing heavily on youtube right now we have about 60000 subscribers oh, over there yeah okay um we are also heavily focusing on youtube and we are trying to we are trying to move on to youtube and and build a platform there mm-hmm. instagram is always going to be there and instagram is always going to be a good platform Inst- see instagram is a discovery platform um and and 
if for your niche especially uh, i don't think instagram is a sustainable platform it's youtube not, is a sustainable youtube platform. is yeah but instagram is where you are going to get yeah. to reach more people automatically going to build um a, a lot more audience in in terms of you know them knowing your personality them knowing who you are that happens through instagram hmm uh you did mention there are enough apps and you gave an example say for example cleansing a uh, cleaning audio hmm. there's you know ai app that uh, um uh, there's one we use hmm. called uh, podcast.adobe.com okay i don't know have you tried it no it's last my editor i'm surprised you should you should try it it's mm. fucking brilliant yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't you won't need these these mics after that yeah yeah <laughs> this record on your phone you're done okay test it out today chill <laughs> on this yeah, on, on this, this audio you should you'll get amazing audio i i was i was watching your uh, mohandas pai podcast okay. there was some echo in there if you put it through that it'll get completely clear oh, so please get that done um yeah so uh, when we talk about ai today i mean it's a raging word but uh, uh, can you share some things about how ai can help content creators better what are some of the things like for example we at? use ai a lot in our research process right because mm-hmm. we are very research intensive so before something that would take us like 4 5 hours to research now it's taking us or an hour and a half to to research because mm-hmm. getting that information getting ideas getting scripts i mean scripts again mm-hmm. i do it myself um but, but then just concise exactly and, oh, exactly mm-hmm. so in there are so many ways in which ai is helping Azan is very skeptical of AI. He is like Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is okay. like a uh he is very very skeptical of AI. Like and and we we discuss a lot about how is AI going to change. Like for example, um there's this creator Varun Maya, do you know him? Yeah. If you see his page, all his content is AI. It's it's mm. not even him on the page. Yeah. He's not he's he's not on the page it's it's his ai uh, uh, clone mm. that is and it looks so real like i couldn't i couldn't make out that it was a clone until he told me ki bro it's i'm i'm not in this video and then i'm like oh shit yeah so there's a lot that can change with ai uh you know gary vinachak yeah yeah you, i mean most of these posts are uh, oh you're a big gary fan is yeah it? so I use I don't like that guy honestly like yeah, I so personally don't like that guy. It was he was like a gateway drug for me into <laughs> content okay into life into life like just, okay you know like bro like do something with your life right like at that start when I wanted to make something for myself uh, now I still respect him but these uh, like these are on the wall still to just like show where Mm-hmm. I started and why I put them up there and mm-hmm. uh, things like that. I'm guessing this is for your boss feeling. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I used to sit here and get right like sloshed. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's the <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, where was it? Yeah, where, where did it go? Ah, so Gary Vaynerchuk on uh, Instagram recently says that uh, content creators don't even need to exist in the future because it it'll all be virtual content like. Correct. you said about varun maya right correct it won't be real people correct you don't need real people to make you don't content. need you don't need that's scary bro it is scary um i am just like okay fuck it whatever happens happens let me just do what i need to do today mm. so i'm just t- doing to- what i need to do today which will make next day better that's all there's no point of worrying about ai r- at least for me what i feel is that if you are able to use what is there today you are going to keep adapt if you are ready to adopt yourself to what's mm. coming you're good so i think the way to judge ourselves is uh, how how quickly are you able to adapt to what is there today exactly and if you are able to do that you'll be at the top of things how re- how how willing are you to able how you how willing mm. are you to be able to adapt to things and adopt different things as well Mm, mm, mm. because i really feel like if i had to interview you 10 years down the line probably you're just going to wear like a headset with i would be yeah. in my house you would be in your yeah. house and this setup this would be a virtual up. virtual yeah. set we would yeah. be like wearing those yeah. fucking apple vision pro and yeah, we'd be yeah. and it'll be our avatars yeah yeah just talking to which each other which would be which would look extremely real yeah <laughs> mm, that's the other thing it needs to look real if it doesn't look real then there's no point but that point is coming at that point as it's come it's not mm, even it's coming not <laughs> mm. and that's sad in a way yeah because yeah. I really love doing this. <laughs> I love meeting people. Yeah. Uh so be it. So be it. Uh 
man uh, have you ever thought about teaching people online i mean do you do that i do do that um, okay. because there's a lot of information i was just thinking right i was just thinking what else to ask you then i realized you know what it's too much to kind of uh, put it into uh, one podcast but mm-hmm. yeah have you ever thought about teaching people teaching about people content what? creation so i do that so with lit school i teach p i get paid to teach people about virtually. content creation virtually also i was teaching with my mm. captain but then getting into the process of content creation to teach people is that what you're talking about mm, start off as a content creator how do you do i have i have i have i thought about it in the beginning but then mm. it's I don't ha- I don't have the bandwidth or the mind space to be able to do it. Like I want to like I want to do a lot like I don't I don't want to keep doing political content honestly. Like mm. it's very mind consuming, it's very taxing mentally, uh emotionally, it's it's heavy, right? Um and I've thought about like I'm I love music, right? Really? Um mm. I love rap, right? And rap is so intricate in its words and its in its music and the word play and the in how a story is being told through like so many words right you the people that come out of doing this poetry which is it's yeah. essentially poetry right poetry. Yeah. it's so depth it's so in depth and i have so much knowledge about it about rap um and i want to and i and i and i'm so excited to tell people about it talk to people mm. about it and i want to create content around it but i just don't have the bandwidth or the mind space to that would be cool it. man if you <laughs> yeah yeah really i will i will do it at some point or the yeah. other uh, hopefully this podcast comes back and <laughs> and you know we we can rewind back but i am going to do it at some point or the other mm. at least at this point i'm not ready i feel mm. uh because you mentioned rap i thought about drake uh <laughs> it's always uh, for me i think his vibe is so fucking inspiring uh-huh no uh, you you listen to rap yeah, yeah. i think uh, yeah who's your favorite rapper usual let's start with eminem <laughs> of, obviously school. yeah yeah and uh yeah now i think i really i'm in love with this guy bro drake, drake? Is, yeah drake was a scandal clamark drake <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i don't want to get into that <laughs> but uh, it, it's so real that uh, my ringtone is started from the bottom ah uh, i want to get a tattoo that says mm-hmm, mm-hmm. started from yeah, the bottom yeah yeah uh he's very inspirational he's very inspirational. very inspirational and his music can, is very uplifting yeah 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 really. so yeah w- what are some of the icons that have uh, made a place in your mind like my favorite is j cole yeah okay um, okay uh, return of simba i love <laughs> i i love j cole um i love kendrick lamar mm-hmm. i love drake as well but mm-hmm. like again it's just different vibes right like if i if i if i want to get emotional and i want to introspect yeah. i listen to j cole mm-hmm. if i want to like if i want like heavy information if i want yeah. heavy inspiration i would listen to kendrick lamar if i want to chill i want to have fun i want to i want a good vibe i listen to drake right so it's just it's just different people um there are a lot of rappers that i listen to i listen to mgk machine gun kelly mm-hmm. um i listen to this guy called russ who's amazing you've never heard of russ dude his music is amazing yeah. he's an independent rapper who he he's one of the most successful independent rappers out mm-hmm. there um amazing amazing vibe amazing rap mm-hmm. um although it's gotten repetitive now but but yeah mm-hmm. so a lot uh, these are the people that that i usually listen to what are some of the founders that have uh, say businessmen or entrepreneurs that have inspired you who are some of those um on to be very very honest no one that that um, i would be like oh fuck yeah this guy is really inspired me like even like globally <laughs> like okay. it's like That's everyone a big statement it it is a big statement it's just that like i'm more inspired by these rappers than i am by no okay uh, the, the businessman it's it's just like I guess I know the rapper stories a lot more than the founder stories right mm. um the the like for example just taking the example of Kendrick Lamar right for him to be able to come from uh, uh from a place where there is where where he could have just gone to drugs and and violence and lived that lifestyle to now being one of the most successful and the the face of rap right yeah. that is very very inspirational for me taking the example of Eminem himself yeah, like yeah. from where he, you know his story everyone knows his story sorry right? watch eight my like exactly I'm, yeah so those stories have been a lot more inspiring and honestly i get inspired by it's not that i i i get inspired by rappers i get inspired by founders i'll get inspired by anyone if they have a mm. come up i'm i'm just like inspired yeah by man it's uh it's therapy it's 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 therapy it's just yeah. honestly it's not therapy it's um it's more like something to look up to 
therapy would be like okay i'm satisfied but that that burns fire inside me ki oh this guy is able to do it why am i not able to do it hmm. nice rohit this was nice i'm glad you came mm-hmm. uh, i'm glad you got in here and uh, it was i mean now i know you better mm-hmm. that was the whole thing i hope you had a <laughs> of course bro <laughs> i had a very interesting conversation <laughs> yeah uh, bro like it's rare that uh, you know people come here and uh, we feel uh, that we can have a bond outside of yeah. the studio uh, it's just generally nice meeting you mm-hmm. like i'm just glad we got to meet you and uh, i think there's much more uh, not just professionally just knowing you better with, yeah. is something that will be pretty cool man <laughs> i think it will be pretty of cool of course of course dude of course yeah. i really liked how uh, you went Uh, those one and a half two years like a solo deep dive mm-hmm. that you took uh, that uh, is a pretty good feedback for me as mm-hmm. well because I think I did that with my life but I did that like more like like in the job that I have today and the, those fields see that's that what I happens started, yeah. so the issue is that and this is something that I'm also facing right now um, is that when you're initially doing something like for example mm. in your case corporate training yeah. um, in my case starting by early opinion mm, right nice, we want to put in as much time and effort yeah. possible to but then once you've gone through that time and effort you know ki, oh fuck I'll have to, I can't go through that shit again right and that is probably why I am not able to like I said I want to do a lot more content I want to do some personal content but I know the grind it will take for me to be able to do anything with that and maybe that's the case for you as well because you've you've gone through that grind it of is, it through is. of that corporate training you don't want to go through that grind of because I know how much it takes exactly <laughs> it takes a lot and that is what happens so people that are wow bro like this was like <laughs> revelation man people wow. that are able to go through that grind multiple times in life i feel are the most successful yeah, ones yeah like how jorogan says in one of his episodes is exactly what he says right so uh, he says never look at uh, life as one mountain mm. so have, he 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 starts by asking have you just ever seen how rare is it to just see one mountain mm. right when you climb a mountain you will see many more around you so then you look at like a higher peak but you're like hey you know what but to get there i need to go down go again down and do the climb exactly again. should i just stay here, you know exactly but the ones who reach the higher peaks have been ready to go down the road again and come back up exactly and this is exactly but yeah i think it uh, it depends on how badly you want it correct uh, if you want it that badly there's no other way correct there's no flight to the next peak exactly it's not going to happen <laughs> just because you're good at this doesn't, doesn't mean mean you're, you're good at me yeah. good at that like yeah man mm. it's okay it's nice it makes the journey worthwhile yeah. if if you had to get it that easily then everyone just everyone would be doing it peak. every tom dick yeah. and harry would be there yeah so it does make it worth the time when you're going you know when you're investing that time into a new thing mm. it does make it worth the time because once you make it if, up there if you're able to make it up there mm. it's worth the time because mm. mm. if i were to go on another journey like that which i have to like that's again it's the same thing for my weight as well my my body mm. as well because i've gone through that journey once i know what is going to take for me to be able to do that again and i in my head i i don't know if i'm ready for it mm. that's the biggest issue Anyway, that's a nice note to get this episode <laughs> to an end. Hoping on a personal note. <laughs> on a personal note, hoping me and uh, Rohit uh, drop a few kilos in the coming <laughs> in the coming months. <laughs> oh man! Uh, thanks for doing this. I wish uh, your team and barely opinionated, barely opinionated. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. All the best. Um, you're doing a killer job man keep at it uh, there are very few people who start out with the intention that we want to spread factual information mm-hmm. and in the age of information just being thrown around correct like i hope my mom's watching at this point i keep telling her like she's influenced by the wrong side of the media <laughs> alleged bro like i'm telling you like sometimes she'll give me statements mm mm-hmm. and uh, i get into the conversation i'm like okay can you tell me why mm-hmm. you're feeling like this or mm-hmm. who told you this right and uh, she'll tell me the name of the source <laughs> and i'm like come on 
you know mom if you're watching this that's the whole point follow that. barely opinion it ah, <laughs> you should you should so follow the right uh, sources so in a time like this i think you're doing a killer job thank you uh man you're 25 like it's so inspiring <laughs> it's really so inspiring like i feel like i want to become a student of yours you know there's so much like i can take from you and i really look you, you'll definitely get like a few calls from me of course because uh, i feel like you have a few solutions that i would uh, <laughs> want to hear about always there uh, bro yeah uh, it's always also nice to meet people who have good intentions mm-hmm. uh, i think today we also filled with a lot of negativity mm-hmm. uh, people who want to build uh, like a lot of people have come up uh, thinking it's purely transactional mm-hmm. that's also something i yeah, appreciate yeah 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 so thanks for making it as easy as you did of course and uh, yeah It's pretty much it bro awesome don't forget <laughs> to subscribe like share give us oh, ets yeah. man <laughs> i don't think i've ever said it but you should it's about fucking time so about fucking time this is, uh, this was episode number 103 uh, we had rohit agarwala uh, and uh, yeah if you watched earlier let us know uh, follow their content uh, follow our content and uh, we'll be back with another other episode very soon see you on the next one